Hello everyone, this is Flammy. Welcome back. We are here with a pretty special video. We're reviewing the new update in all of its glory. It has now been released, it's been out for the weekend, and I'm here to let you guys know how all this stuff is going to impact the game. And in case you haven't found some of the smaller, sneaky things, well, I'll point some of those out to you as well. Alright, so what's going on? New update time. This is the May update. If you're watching this a long time in the future, these are all the changes that happened, which you're probably now used to being in part of the normal game. So we had a couple big things, but to start off, let's do the unusual thing, which will not be mentioned in most of the change logs and stuff. So first of all, I'm going to move some buildings out of the way here, and I'll point out something pretty interesting. You see this little or sort of gold plaque right here? That right there that I'm pointing at right there, that is in fact the very center of the map. So this little diamond sort of shape placard indicates where the center of the map is, which is going to be very helpful in the, in the future for positioning your base if you want to be positioned in such a way that it's aligned in the center or perhaps not aligned in the center as you prefer. So just like that, they left a little placard right there in the middle so you can find that. Not everyone has noticed that yet, and it wasn't actually in the change log. Now, something else that was not in the change log as well, in the barracks, what you can do is if you're coming in here, you want to train some troops, queue an archer, cancel an archer, now let's go to the next barracks. What you used to have to do is hit X, come over here, hit train troops again. Add an archer, remove an archer, blah, blah, blah. Now what you can do is there's these big orange arrows on the, this side, Oh, I guess I can't click them. Uh, so they're on the left and the right side, the big orange arrows. And you can click them and just swap barracks. And they go through your dark elixir barracks as well, as well as your spell factory, and then back to your first barracks again. So in this way, you can really quickly swap through all of them and just queue your troops, queue your spells, queue whatever's needed, and you won't forget anything by just using those arrows. It's also a lot faster than closing out, finding the next one, hitting trained troops or trained spells, whatever. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty useful, and uh, not everyone's noticed that yet, so if you hadn't noticed that, that's pretty awesome. All right, let's move on to some of the things which are in the new update, and uh, we're very noticeable the part of the new update. So we're going to go to top players. We're going to check out Jorge's base because Jorge is awesome, and he would not mind me visiting his base to point out some of these new features. He also has everything maxed out. So first off, the probably the most important is Town Hall 10. Town Hall 10 was certainly known before this update. It was sneaked and teased a bit. And even if it wasn't completely known, you could sort of predict it was coming relatively soon. In fact, I've been calling it probably come out in this update for a month or two now. Uh, so Town Hall 10, what did it unlock specifically? Well, the biggest single unlock was probably this Inferno Tower right here. So Inferno Tower goes up to level 2 currently. Undoubtedly, we'll have more in the future. But if I pull up its stats, look at this. 30 through 1,250 damage per second. What does that mean? Well, if you read the description down here, it means that as it does damage to one unit, it will start doing more and more and more damage. So it goes up to a maximum of 12,500... Uh, 12,000? No. 1,250 damage per second uh, if the unit doesn't die. If it kills the unit, moves on to the next one, but then it starts over with a low damage per second. So very interesting mechanics on that one. Going to be very effective against uh, large, heavy hitting units with lots of health. So golems, dragons, pekkas, giants even. Um, so interesting for that, especially for the top players, how that's going to change stuff. Now beyond that, what was also released? Crossbows level 4 are going to be huge, air defenses level 8 are going to be huge, and beyond that, I think that was the only updates that we got in terms of defenses for the new one. Uh, I would definitely predict we're going to have mortars, archer towers, and cannons all coming out relatively soon, as well as possibly wizard towers as well. Um, we might get a new clan castle eventually, we'll see about that. All those things have yet to come. Now, to afford some of these things, there was the question of how are you going to afford these new crossbows? What they did was they actually ended up making a lot of stuff cheaper, so I'm just going to go over those right now. Um, they, inc they did a ton of stuff, so they decreased the healer's stuff, so that's training, ha the housing space requirements, training time, and training costs. Decrease the hero's upgrade times, regeneration times, and upgrade costs on certain levels, not all of them. And then for golems, uh, not level 1 golems, but you can see some golems over here on the right side. Let me zoom in on those guys. For the golems level 2, 3, and 4, uh, they changed some of the training costs to decrease them and make them cheaper. Uh, beyond that, they decreased the cost of Town Hall 9, so that actually really affects me, so I'll head on home and show you that. Before, I believe it cost 4 million. Well, they've ended up changing that, so just in time for me to upgrade, it now only costs 3 million, and still gives all these awesome bonuses. Didn't change any of those. Beyond that, let's keep on going down the list here. They decreased the cost of uh, the lab, uh, increasing the lab itself, that is. So lab is now only... Uh, 
2.5 million when I believe it was maybe 4? A lot, it was a lot more before. So they decreased this for going up to level 5, 6, and 7. They also decreased the cost for the crossbows, level 2 and 3. Um, and then air defense, level 7 got cheaper, and as well as decreased the cost of the dark elixir drill. Um, so yes, that was the last one. Now, what's interesting here, especially with the crossbow, so level, level 3 crossbows had cost 8 million gold initially, which cost the total amount, 100% of four maxed out storages, which is the maximum number of storages that were in the game before. So when they announced level four expos, people were wondering, myself included, how they were gonna handle this. Was there gonna be a new storage? Was there going to be um, a new level to the storages? Were there gonna be multiple? Uh, we didn't know how it was gonna be handled. Turns out they handled it by decreasing the cost. So this was awesome, and everyone who ha doesn't yet have them upgraded is certainly happy. And in fact, everyone who's got them upgraded as well, the top players like Jorge, they're happy to have this as well, because uh, think about it. So they did have to spend $8 million to get their crossbow level 3, right? Per one. Yes, but also now they only have to spend $8 million to get the next one as well. So instead of having to spend $12 million or something. So yes, they could have saved out if they'd waited, but they're top players. They didn't wait. But they certainly can take advantage of the fact that the next update, the one they just got, that you saw Jorge's level 4 crossbows, they were cheaper. So that's awesome for them as well. Now, there were some other fun little things as well, beyond those sort of sneak peeks that I mentioned before. So I'll just run through all those as well. So we did get something for all players, and that's really awesome. That's going to be the attack log. So before we had this defensive log, so you can load up the replays of people who've attacked your base, um, and just see how they destroyed your base, etc, 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 review your damage taken and whatnot, how much they had to do to get that those resources. Now you've got the attack log as well. So here we've got a pretty awesome attack that I just did 10 minutes ago. As you can see, I did 100% damage, and I got some nice loot. In fact, I did not record this, so in fact I can go in and record this now with this replay feature which is great for me so you guys can let me know in the comments section how you think I should handle this if I should be recording everything live I think I'll still do my commentary live but should I still do attacks live as well it certainly is going to influence stuff and uh, it certainly matters because it's going to change up both my style as well as for you guys it's helpful to see and if you want to go see exactly why say your resources you why your units didn't operate in the exact particular way well you can go find out by watching your replay and see if oh I forgot about the Tesla that ended up popping up over on this side something like that all right beyond that there are a couple other small things uh but the biggest one which i've not yet discussed is the personal breaks enforcement now what is this this was only a single line the change log this came out of left field no one knew this was coming and this is targeted absolutely at the top players so since this update has come out the top players list has changed a lot Vizia here has gone down a whole lot of trophies. They were above 4,000 when the update came out, and they ended up both getting passed and dropping a lot of trophies right away. What this change does is every eight hours, the top players have to log off. And this is, uh, I believe, it's enforced for all players, not just top players, but the top players it matters most to, because one of their common strategies is to stay online for as long as possible. Every eight hours they have to disconnect and it doesn't let them on often for a few minutes right away. And now there's either a bug or this is still being tweaked because I've been talking with Jorge and Jorge tells me this. The eight hours isn't actually fixed. So the eight hour number itself came from a Supercell employee on the official forums. However, Jorge says that both he and other players have been experiencing sort of varying degrees of timeout enforcement. So... Um, Jorge said he got a six hour ish one. He said another players have gotten three, four, five ish hour ones. It's been a range. So maybe Supercell's adjusting things. And maybe Supercell, maybe there's a bug. He's one of the two, most likely. I would probably bet that Supercell is just adjusting things right away. But to be determined exactly how it's supposed to work. But I can tell you across the board, top players hate this. What this means is they can lose trophies when they aren't expecting to because they just get kicked offline. Apparently, there's no warning whatsoever. And they are definitely complaining to Supercell about this. Uh, and perhaps, like, the system itself isn't necessarily need to disappear. They're not, that's not necessarily what they're all saying, but they just need some changes. So it's uh, more obvious how it works. Maybe a timer indicator, sort of like perhaps up in the shield area where there's a shield that says none. Well, what if that said you must take a break in eight hours? If that had a timer up there, that would be pretty helpful. Uh, so yes, that is sort of uh, very inconveniencing the top players. And I do want to address something. So some of you guys might be thinking, oh, these top players, they just spend gems anyways. They can just spend more money to get back there. Well, the thing is for the top players, 
it takes time more than money. Yes, they do spend lots of money so they can attack with expensive armies and max out their bases right away as soon as the update comes out. And they do that indeed. However, to get these trophies, Jorge has to get these trophies one by one by one. And I'm sure that's true for all these top 10 players as well. For most of the players they're attacking, I don't know who I visited, but let's go load it up anyways. For all these top players, whoever uh, they are attacking, they're almost certainly only getting one trophy per win. So this is incredibly slow. And um, it, it really sucks for them because when they lose a match because they weren't expecting to be kicked offline and someone attacks them because they didn't have a shield and they lose trophies, they end up losing 20 plus trophies every time. Uh, almost certainly 40 ish trophies. That's a two star. They lose 40 trophies for most two star defeats. And um, in fact, despite their bases being maxed out, as you can see, they still lose lots of trophies because offense is a lot stronger than defense. It's basically guaranteed you're going to lose. In fact, there's a couple bases in the top players who, in fact, uh, they in fact they uh, don't have defenses built out because they, uh, they know that defense is not currently important. It's all about the offense. So what I'm saying is if you get attacked once as a top player when you're not expecting it, you lose 40 trophies. That's 40 different attacks you have to do, and that turns out to be 20 hours of raiding of attacking, perhaps even more. That's a ton of gameplay to be set back. So, yep, these guy, top players are really uh, sort of upset about that. Now, there are there are a couple other indicators, uh, or a couple other updates in this update, which I will go over real fast. Let's go to top clans now, rather than top players. Let's go visit North 44. Now, something that's huge about this update is troops donated right here and troops received right here. So these two um, are just keeping track of how many troops are donated and received by this player during the two-week section before it resets. And this is a pretty awesome update. So you might notice some unusual numbers up here with these troops donated, troops reset. That's because these players are jumping in and out of clans often. But the thing is, it's going to be great for most normal clans to keep track of activity and see who players are sort of leeching off the others. So that's a great change. I'm really happy to see that one. Now there is another change, which I am going to show you how to do real fast. There is a change to when you're talking in either global chat or clan chat, there's a way to get smiley face characters. So I'm going to type in here, pull this up, and you see here, there's no indicator for alternative keyboards. I don't think I've enabled it. No, I haven't. So I'm going to show you on this iPad how you can enable it yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the home button and then we're going to go over to general settings. So right in here in settings, loading this up, it's a bit slow as you can see. We're going to go over to, as soon as this loads, we're going to go over to keyboards and I need to figure out where this is. I did this on my other one, but it's been a minute. So I think it's under here somewhere, under general, so keyboard, and then I think we got a keyboard, plural. Um, da, da, da. international keyboards, that's it. Add new keyboard, and we're going to add, it starts with an E, emoji, right here. You see this right that I've got selected? I'm just going to select that and add it. So now I've got English and emoji selected as my two keyboards. Now I can go back to game, hopefully this will work, and that will enable smiley faces in both global chat and clan chat. So these are pretty cool, and you've probably seen a lot of them lately. And in case you didn't know, that right there is how you enable smiley faces, because you've probably seen a lot of them. So just to, ref to go, go to settings, go to general, keyboard, keyboards, add a new keyboard, emoji. That's it right there. Um, so yep, looks like I'm not going to be able to load back in game, just a little recording thing right here. That's why I want to do this last. Alright guys, thank you very much for watching. That's going to wrap it up for this update video. This has been the May update, in case you were not aware. And it had a lot of new stuff. Town Hall 10 was the biggest one, but a bunch of little changes which have been affecting lots of players across the board. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little review. If you did not notice any of these, hope you were able to learn about them here now. There are a couple of the small ones. So you can comment in the comment section if I forgot any of them. And uh, as well, as tell me which of these updates, which of these little changes, which have been your favorite. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Have a great day. Enjoy the new update and clash on. Three.